A thread by Carlos Osuita. I've been thinking about something that came up earlier, the demand that conservatives fight back. President Trump fights back, but he's not trying to convince his opponents. He's destroying them for attacking him and us. Look at this video entitled, Portland Liberal Democrat Red Pilled by Rioting. We're all voting Republican. Long story short, just under a minute video. Check it out in the description. It's great. It's a cute young girl, about maybe 25 years old, telling everybody she's been a Democrat her entire life. She and her friends are all fed up and they're going to vote Republican. Did you catch the most important part? The change came from within her culture. She and all her friends came to the same conclusion themselves by watching what was happening. I'll go back to my communist brother. For the first time in our lives, he called me in order to have a political fight. He's been a communist since 1987. He joined a cult led by Fred Newman, a psychologist and philosopher. My brother was a capo. That's him in the background on the right, looking down. My brother decided to suddenly think that I'm stupid, so he had no idea that I figured out exactly what he was doing. I spent 37 years studying terrorism and counterterrorism, so I knew how my brother sent messages to his cult. They created the New Alliance Party. It was a Marxist organization that had no real ambitions, but the members were true believers. My brother is intellectually gifted, but he's terrified of introspection. Fred Newman was a proponent of intersectionality. Intersectionality says at the end of the day that absolutely everything is a social construct. You think the way you do because of how society and power structures treat you due to your color gender, class, etc. The lethal failure of intersectionality? Proponents say that the only way to fight oppression is to engage in self-valuation and self-definition in order to become totally self-aware. How do you get there? By letting intersectionalists define you. White male heterosexuals, for example. In order to become self-aware, they must empty their heads and fill it with all the tenets of intersectionalism. So the theory is pure nonsense. It's simply more oppression, self-negation. My brother's cult used LSD to brainwash him. He'd call my mother in a panic because he couldn't tie his shoes. Since 1991, when I returned to the U.S., he treated me with snobbish contempt, poorly disguised as patient explanation. I never asked for explanations. He forced them on me. It didn't bother me. He was off his rocker, and he didn't know that I figured out that he was taking messages to cult members in person so that they could avoid federal wiretaps. The New Alliance Party was a subversive organization, but its purpose was to get Fred laid. Without the cult, Fred would have died a virgin. So, a while back, I've forgotten when, my communist brother called to berate me about Trump. Normally, he speaks in a gentle nun's voice, but this time he was screaming like Hitler. I got him to sit at his computer and I debunked all of his accusations. After each debunking, he'd simply move on to another. When he'd reached the end, he went back to the beginning. And this is why it's pointless to try and change the minds of leftists, unless they ask. All those entertaining confrontations that I never watched were a complete waste of time. The culture must change from within. Saudi Arabia will become the most secular Muslim country in the world. The change came from within. They themselves decided to change. When Trump took office, we had ongoing wars in Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, Yemen, and Libya. Now, no genuine combat footage coming out of any of those places. Do you know why? 
Trump got allies and emissaries to speak to the warring parties under the radar. The message was always the same. What can we do to help? The reason Trump doesn't advertise this is that the press has no right to know about it. The press is in the business to create mayhem. I just watched a ridiculous Sky News report that Boko Haram is succeeding in creating an African caliphate based on the Islamic State model. Anybody see the problem there? That's like saying a shipbuilder has succeeded in creating a successful ocean liner based on the Titanic. People refuse to accept that certain approaches are always doomed to fail. You can't create an empire with light weapons. Not when your enemies have stuff like this. <laughs> this is the clip from Outbreak. Let's just watch it for fun. The sound of an airplane and people shouting. There's your fuel air device. There's a dude who quickly knows what it is. And let's see the explosion. Goodbye. All right, that's all right, that's the worst thing ever. All right, moving on. Trump is so successful because he isn't crippled by cognitive rigidity. He knew that the best way to destroy leftism was to unleash it. The Democrats will never recover from Trump's first term. There's no excuse for this. And this is just footage from the bar testimony in front of Congress yesterday. Link in the description to the thread. Come check it out if you can stomach it. Democrats are playing to the insane. That means they lose. Not only is Trump playing to the sane, he keeps delivering. People will tell you that the election could go either way. What are they basing that on? Polls. Sometimes I wonder if my brother, Donald Trump, his allies, and I are the last people on earth playing with a full deck, his Vegas brother, not his communist brother. The entire country has erased 2016 from its collective memory. How is that possible? It's frightening. It's good for Trump, but it says nothing but bad things about too many of us. It says that too many of us believe in magic. It says that too many of us can't engage in critical thinking. It says that too many of us are members of a thundering herd of sardine ball or a sardine ball. The polls were off in 2016 for concrete reasons. These reasons are real, they exist, and they're more in play today than in 2016. One, people change their minds at the last minute. Two, most Trump voters refuse to participate in polls. Three, first time voters can't be polled because they aren't on any list. It's not possible for pollsters to weigh for these factors. And electoral college votes can't be predicted. When a candidate goes only for electoral college votes, all bets are off. Pollsters are just spitballing. It's as though 2016 never happened. I'm told, if you get overconfident, you'll lose. Wrong. I know exactly why Trump will win, because I studied it. You didn't. So shut up. This is different from video analysis. When I analyze videos, I'm making swags, scientific wild-ass guesses. There's no guesswork involved in the polling. Knowledge is power, really. Be confident. Trump and the GOP will win. And we need to let Black Lives Matter, Antifa, and the Democrats do the heavy lifting, which they are. Bless their hearts.